So here's the sketch I did for Tails Crush in Sonic Boom. When I first did this sketch, there was not enough references of Zoe. So I redid it on the computer when there were more references of Zoe. So what I did was I watched Tails in Orange and then erased it and then I didn't like that. So then I decided to do outlining it in the orange color and filling that in. And that's what I'm doing through most of this part is just like blocking in all the colors and getting the pieces in so I can do the shading later. So what I liked about the Sonic Boom Tails Crush episode is how Tails <laughs> is not paying attention being in love and that's not something we have seen in Sonic uh, TV shows before or specifically with Tails in any way. So that was really fun to see and how he was getting distracted and he couldn't pay attention. Um, what I didn't like about the episode was it was too predictable. His friends giving it advice, it doesn't end up being useful at all. And it's slightly funny how Eggman was the one who gives him the advice to just be himself. I'm really glad that I got to redo this pic because um, some of the things I made um, better. Like here at the belt, I end up actually giving Tails his signature tail two tails logo and um when i ended up shading it it looked really cool and as you see i bring the picture up again for reference and color pick um because i didn't have that on the sketch and then doing the tail um and doing the tail there clipping it on one layer um now we're on zoe at first, when I was doing Zoe in the, the pencil sketch, I thought she was a really easy character to draw. And then doing it again, I realized there was some differences. Like, her imitating her dress was um, not that easy. Like, I had to um, get, like, redo it so it looked baggy. And I didn't really see that a lot when I did it the first time around. And then she has those bangs that come out. So I hid those as well. And then her shoes are like flip flops almost. So I got that totally wrong when I first did it. So she got the most changes when I redid it on the computer. One of the things I had to do a lot with Zoe was hide certain um, clothes and hair of her. Um, for the bracelet, I just used two circles and erased one. Um, because the reason why I have to like hide so many layers as working with her was um, so I could see the dress and I like, did outline before I filled it. There I tried to have Tails arm wrap around Zoe, but it didn't look right with the glove. Now I'm at the shading stages, um, so I just took, so the layer's on multiply and it's on clip, so I'm just taking um, the color and then sh um, using the blur tool to get that nice um, gradient effect um and to be honest Hill's hair is not the easiest for me but that's the style um 
I do with his hair just because the bent things for the fronts is just hard for me. Um, so, it's... so now um, I go and fix um, the bangs for where the main color is and um, erase some of the blur that got over. I ended up blurring it because um, it looks nicer that way and that it's like on the same layer of the color. The thing of the um, when you clip a layer if the shade and the highlight are there they'll only go where that color is so they won't go where any of that goes off so the blur on the main color actually helps um, get, um, get it, like, to gradually go there and still make it feel like it's one even though it's just another layer as well. And then after, yeah, you could see me, um, blur that part. Um, now I'm going, uh, to shade the eyelids. Um, I have to, like, make it, um, separate, um, here, uh, because, um, when I unclip the layer, it, um, it will, um, make it go everywhere. And, um, that's not what I want. And the problem when you clip a layer to shade, it will only do it, um, where that layer is. So, if you have it over another, it will just go on, like, the eyelid and not the actual, um, then you... I wouldn't be able to do the eye socket as well, which would be a problem. So I know I've been talking about layers and I know you guys can't see them, but I didn't know that from when I was recording this because um, it was blocked off from probably the last time I recorded it. Um, so I didn't like know till later. And I, I'm letting you guys know this because this thing I'm doing I, is on so many different layers. And there has been times as I was recording where I would have to pause the recording session, go to the internet, and then come back just so my tools would work again on the program. Because sometimes... Because sometimes I want to do one tool, like the pen tool, and it was still on the blur tool, for example. And um, I couldn't get back to it unless I went to the internet. So there's that. And part of the reason might be because I have so many layers, it slows down the program and makes it um, slower, as from one of my teachers from college said. So that is probably why I had to do that so many times. I wasn't going to merge the layers because I needed them for how I was shading and um, highlighting stuff. If I had everything on this same layer for the same color, it would make things very difficult. And if I got shade out of a certain area I didn't want to, then I would have to go and erase her. Having everything on a separate layer like this makes it easier. Okay, so this is where I shade the eye sockets and then I'll shade the eyelids doing um, underneath them and having it on a gray color in the layer 
uh, multiply so I can just use it for every layer for the shading. Um, so here I'm shading the legs and the arms and then I'm going to do um, the highlights right there and then use the blur tool again and then shading the tummy and then the belt so made that a separate section as I was shading it um, and then the highlights on the belt and then highlights on the buckle and then shading where the clip is, where the logo is, and then the hand. And I low I'm lowering those layers so I can see the sketch underneath it, so I can tell where um the shade would go. So um that also with the um tape, um I had to be careful because if I shaded like where it would be underneath, it would mess it up. And then shading the arm, and then the tails, and then tails will almost be done. Um, yep, and now we're on Zoe. I lowered her um, hair, and then I re-sketched the front um, head Thing she had and then uh, she did that and highlighted that um, and then I shaded the ears I feel more correctly than when I did tails and then I shaded it underneath the head thing to make it feel like it's not like band big hand thing um, and then I made that part darker because it was by tails and I actually did the um, eyelash lines, which I stopped doing for a while in my art pieces, but then I did it on her, and I, it turned out okay. I just don't always do them, because they're just, even though they're simple, it's just, it's just easier to shade stuff, and then just, instead of just, like, having those be lines. And then for, um, the eyes... When I did those, it's just the eye pupil is the same as the dark color I use around, and then um, I blur that and I blurred the highlight, um, and and then I blur the pupil a bit and get those highlights. And now I'm shading the dress, so that was really hard because I was trying to make it look baggy as possible um and it turned out pretty good it it was really hard to get that baggy effect but it seems like on the final pick it turned out really good and people um like that and then my name there outer stroke cleaning up the outer stroke a bit 